You're listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets Exposed, Episode 4, Sonnet 3. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What if I say I'm not just another not one in your place? place? You're the pretender. What if I say I will never surrender? Right, let's begin with a campaign update. Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons for their contributions, and more importantly for showing faith in a project I've been obsessed with, possessed by, and struggling to get off the ground for years. If you're wondering about the new format, a new patron, thank you for joining us, Seth, has suggested that podcasts might prove more practical than videos. Not only am I inclined to agree with him, but I'm already finding it a lot easier, so let's do this. Last week, I prepared an Indiegogo campaign. It's not open yet, but it'll officially be just to fund a single page. The idea is to leave it running to allow once-off contributions and to sell merch. Contributions from there will join the Patreon funds in going straight into the graphic novel, so I'm going to have to set up a fund calculator myself to show everything combined and keep things as transparent as possible. It suddenly occurred to me that each sonnet serves as Shakespeare's reflection not just in the sense of his self being reflected in the sonnets, but also in the sense that each sonnet is an instance of Shakespeare reflecting on a thought or theme. One of my patrons, Tim West, left a comment that was very interesting. I'm not sure if Shakespeare would have been familiar with the net of Indra. I know I certainly wasn't. But the idea of an infinite net of gem eyes reflecting all the others does fit perfectly with what Shakespeare has done with his sonnets. And considering the age of the texts and the types of people Shakespeare would have hung around with, it is definitely conceivable that he could have been inspired by it. Right, let's analyze Sonnet 3. Look in thy glass and tell the face thou viewest. Now is the time that face should form another. Glass means mirror, but with the framing of the Narcissus story refers to the surface of the water or spring wherein Narcissus sees his reflection. In this case, it also means the ink in which Shakespeare is seeing his reflection. The sonnet sequence is kind of like Alice's looking glass. Not only is the world on the viewer's side of the glass real, but the reflection experiences its own reality and sees the real as its reflection. So what's happening here is that Shakespeare is instructing the sonnet to tell him to write another sonnet. But at the same time, the sonnet, which is Shakespeare's reflection, is instructing its maker to tell the sonnet to lead it to another one. As usual, there's the third actor, the reader, being instructed simultaneously to do the same, which means both reading the sonnet and the following ones, and having a literal child. Whose fresh repair, if now thou not renewest, thou dost beguile the world, and bless some mother. Not only will Shakespeare and his sonnet be cheating the world out of a new sonnet, but the word unbless is very particular. To be unblessed doesn't simply mean to be deprived or to be made unhappy. It means to take away the source of happiness. Shakespeare and his wife were unblessed when Hamnet died, and not writing the sonnets, which are a tribute to Hamnet and and replace him in continuing Shakespeare's legacy and spirit, would be an insult to both parents and their child's memory. In Sonnet 8, the trinity of sire and child and happy mother are Shakespeare, the sonnet, and the reader. The reader is presumed to be a female and plays the role of Echo from the Narcissus story. In Sonnet 3, we have two references to mother, and the reader, or unblessed mother, could refer to either Shakespeare's wife or the reader, Hathaway unblessed with her actual child, the reader by not being able to enjoy the sonnets. For where is she so fair whose unyeared womb disdains the tillage of thy husbandry? In the 16th and 17th century, the biology of procreation wasn't well understood, and they believed that the semen was planted in in an empty womb. Each blank page, each unwritten sonnet, is a womb, and there's a theme beginning with Sonnet 8 in which the sonnets, the word literally meaning little songs, are uneared and literally do not have ears to hear, even though the reader will sound them out while reading. These lines evoke a very neat image of lines of ink across the page being the rose in which the poet plants his words. Or who is he so fond will be the tomb? of his self-love to stop posterity. These two lines are asking if Shakespeare is so greedy for his self-love that he would be prepared to end his legacy by not using it to produce children or sonnets. 
At the same time, they're asking if the sonnet is so greedy for Shakespeare's self-love that it would be willing to end his legacy by not leading on to another sonnet. Thou art thy mother's glass, and she in thee calls back the lovely April of her prime. In this second reference to mother, we can imagine that whoever the mother may be, when she looks into these sonnet reflections, she will find her youth, and possibly memories of her lost child buried there. So thou, through windows of thine age, shalt see, despite of wrinkles, this thy golden time. Shakespeare, when he's old, will look back through these sonnet windows and see his youth in spite of his physical wrinkles. The reader, in whatever age she finds herself reading the sonnets, will look back through the torn and crumpled pages and see Shakespeare's youth. But if thou live, remembered not to be, die single, and thine image dies with thee. If Shakespeare lives and does not invest in his legacy, he will die lonely and his imagined reflections will disappear along with his body. If the sonnets live and are not remembered, it would amount to the same thing. Okay, tattoo updates. In addition to producing these sonnet analyses and funding a graphic novel, I've also committed myself, in every sense of the word, to tattooing 154 images onto my body, each one an image representing a sonnet. This week I met with my tattoo artist, Sean Fawkes from Kaklaki Tattoos, and we have a pretty good idea of what the next three sonnets, two, three, and four, will look like. It looks like I'll be doing two and three together sometime in early December, and I'll discuss the images in separate posts, which will be available on the Patreon and Reddit. If you haven't already, then please sign up to support me at www.patreon.com slash fisherking, and please join our community discussions on Reddit at slash r slash sonnetcomics with an x. Thanks for listening, and have a great week! What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What, what if I say I'm not just another one in your place? You're the pretender. What if I say I will never surrender?